Jones steps up. Ricketts is at the high point. Jones. Aromaterio has a lane. Nicholas Aromaterio, the shot. Scores! Holy jumping! The Italian stallion puts the puck in the back of the net. Mamma mia, Nicholas Aromaterio! So the chief it even does. Callum Jones reports at the blue light kept in by the skate of Thomas Maya. Maya. Down low on the half course, he swings out of the slot for Potts. Kyle Potts has it, hangs on, now he shoots, scores! Holy jumping! How do you do? Kyle Potts puts the puck in the back of the net. Blocked that shot, and coming the other way is Alton McDermott, he's in on the breakaway, scores! Holy jumping! His grandfather, Paul Henderson, must be ecstatic about that one because Alton McDermott just scored his first career Buckland Cup final playoff goal has been pulled. The Dukes are in the Oakville zone. Zone Elvis swung that around. The Blades are trying to tie this puck up. It goes into the corner. The Blades have a chance to get this out. Elvis will tie it up. Ten seconds. Gilmore has it at the point. It's in. Tips just wide. Seven seconds. It's back in the corner. Ewing's blocking. Three, two, one. The Oakville Blades. Oh! You're watching Mamma Mia! This is Fire Talk with Nicholas Fiore. Welcome back, everybody, to episode number 22 of Mamma Mia! This is Fire Talk, and joining me on this edition of the show is Eric Ciccolini, number nine forward for the University of Michigan in the NCAA Division I. Eric, thanks for joining me, buddy. I appreciate it. Uh, no problem. Uh, glad to be here. All right. And, you know, let's get things going. Obviously, uh, tough times now during COVID-19. You're up in uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan, in the States, uh, with the Mich University of Michigan, obviously. Um, how have you been? How's the team been? And uh, how's COVID up there? Um, we've been pretty good. Um, we are getting tested like six days a week, so we're staying pretty safe and that's basically why we're playing right now. And I think we're like the only conference to continue going and haven't had to cancel any games so far. So I think we've been staying as safe as we can and limiting seeing other people and just seeing our team and stuff like that. I've been seeing teams like RIT, for example, coming in, coming out, not knowing if they're going to play or not. Um, other teams just canceling the program this season in general. Um, six times uh, a week, though, that that's quite a bit. That's that's a lot of money, obviously, being put in. How uh, grateful are you for that? Because without that, you guys probably wouldn't even be playing. Yeah, I think we're we got to be pretty fortunate for what we're able to do. And we're like the only there's only three teams like on campus playing right now. It's like us, basketball, and football. Wow. We're all getting tested three six days a week, so it's pretty good and pretty fortunate for that. Absolutely. Um, obviously, you know, you're, you're a Vaughn boy, right, right back here in, uh, in the GTA um, and drafted in the NHL for the New York Rangers. Uh, 2019 NHL draft, 205th overall um, in the seventh round. And, and some people, some kids, Eric, they're, they're wishing to even get drafted. And even though people say seventh rounds, but we know what seventh rounders have done in the past, right? And obviously mm. you want to be one of them um in the future but your focus is obviously in michigan right now but how grateful are you to have been uh been drafted in the nhl by the rangers and obviously a new york rangers prospect yeah it was that day was pretty special to me and going down to vancouver where it was and sit through all those rounds and finally get your name called it was pretty cool and i just playing at michigan and working towards getting there every day i think is pretty important to me and Everyone's been helping me in the past and helping me now, and my teammates pushing me. I think it will just help me get to that next level. Absolutely, and obviously, you know the guys and the teams helping you in the past. You started with the Vaughn Kings, um, your hometown back at U15, U16, obviously um, in the AAA and, and all those ranks there. And then you moved uh, to Milton your first junior year, and then obviously finding a home with JRC after. Uh, being traded, if I'm not mistaken, the 17-18 season from Milton yeah. to Toronto. Yeah. 
and obviously recording 48 games and 62 points in the 18-19 season, uh, your full year with JRC, and 19 points with Milton, 11 points with JRC in the previous year. How, uh, how was your time in junior hockey in general, obviously in the Ontario Junior Hockey League, which where I am now as a broadcaster with the Oakville Blades, how was your time uh, generally with Milton and obviously touch upon JRC? Yeah, I think with Milton, like, I think it really helped me to get a grasp with the league and being like really young and probably like the youngest on the team and having an opportunity to play, I think it was really good for me and showing what I can do. And I think that really like jumpstart me like getting confidence from like the years before and showing that I can play with older guys. And then I guess getting traded, uh, it was a really big opportunity again, coming into like a really good team with like, we had Jack McBain, Jake Joffe and like Jason Pinio and those guys really helped me, I think, like get better and just keep pushing myself and going against better guys every day. And then I think then the final season, which was my draft year, just like being more confident and taking advantage of having like a bigger role and bigger impact on the team and like had a pretty good pretty good overall uh, experience in the OJ. And, and obviously, you know, the OJ, they call it the League of Choice. And for the most part, I mean, I'd say it's one of the topper leagues in Junior A um, in, in Canada in general, right? Obviously, you got, you know, the BCHL and, and, a, and the NOJHL and a few others. But OJHL produces a lot of guys moving to the next level, um, obviously, like yourself. Yeah. Um, was it anything uh, a big deal being traded? Like in any league, you know, sometimes you stress out about it. But in the OJ, which was just as simple as, well, I guess I'm going to a new rink this, this morning for practice. Oh uh, yeah, um, I, I think it was a it was a little bit of a change, obviously, but I think it was a good thing for me. I wasn't pretty wasn't really mad about being traded as we weren't really one of the greatest teams in Milton, but I did learn a lot from there and give credit to my coach uh, Mario Trujillo. He really helped me that first couple months uh, transitioning into the league, and I think getting traded to JRC ultimately like helped me as a player and just improving from there. Absolutely. And obviously, JRC helped you as a player. And, and like you said, improved, right? Improved, I should say. Mm-hmm. And that led you to the University of Michigan. Um, we'll touch upon that, of course. But what did JRC do for you? How did you develop under them to, for them to set you up for the scholarship in, uh, in Michigan? I think, especially like getting traded that year, there's like a lot of... Uh attraction around like Jack McBain and like scouts are coming to our games all the time NHL NCAA so there's a lot of like people always watching and you always have to play your best and I think that just helped me for the next season as well as they saw me the year before and I just had to keep doing what I could to get that scholarship obviously and then even get drafted too. Well, obviously, you guys both did good because you're in Michigan, Jackson, Boston College. So you guys did a good job yeah. trusting those scouts. So good for you. And obviously, year number one um, with the University of Michigan was last season. Um, 11 points, a goal and a 10 assists in 26 mm-hmm. games, which isn't bad, really, in my opinion, for a freshman. Um, not because I'm talking to you, because it's just – it's facts. Mm-hmm. 11 points is, is not bad for yeah. a guy coming in, right, yeah. especially from out of country. Um, how was your first year with Michigan – on the ice, off the ice, your just overall experience? Yeah, I had a really good year last season. A lot of the, I think the seniors are really good, like Will Lockwood, Jake Slaker, they, they really helped me along the way, and they're going on to play the next level. And I think last year I learned a lot and about myself and transitioning to the league as like really big jump from the OJ to college, as I noticed. And I think just playing that amount of games really helped me, and I think now I'll try to build off that and gain more confidence. I think last year, like I played through like a torn labrum all season. So wow. that was something hard to do. And I just try to play through it. And now it's uh, helped me out too. You touched upon the big jump from the OJHL to the NCAA, Eric. And, and I've been told speed, speed, speed is the number one. Is there anything else that you noticed on the difference of junior A to NCAA? Well, you're playing against older guys. Like, I was, I guess, 18, playing against, like, a 26-year-old. So, <laughs> pretty big difference. A lot bigger. I'm not the strongest guy either. So, I was try to use my speed as much as I can. And I think try to do that to 
take advantage of it. And obviously, you know, you don't you you won some you won some awards in the OJ that probably helped you uh, you know get to where you are now um, in the eighteen nineteen season. I mean, OJHL first team all prospect, OJHL top prospect, OJHL second team all star, and OHA top prospect. Do you think um, those awards, those accolades in that final junior year, help you um, get to where you are in Michigan? Yeah, I think they they do help me a little bit, but it's also like you got to play. It's not just the awards. It's just playing both ends of the ice. Getting points is great, but playing defensively and being a good teammate, all that stuff. And I think that all helped me to get into where I am. When you had the opportunity of choosing a school, Eric, why why Michigan? What gravitated gravitated you to Michigan? The gravitational pull. Was there any other schools interested, involved? Any other routes as well? Why the University of Michigan? So at first, like earlier that season, I committed to Colgate, Colgate and then I decommitted from there. And then uh, like a month after, I was able to see a couple of schools. I saw uh, North Dakota had interest from like UNH, uh, Western Michigan, stuff like that. And then I saw Michigan as well. I think Michigan, just because it was like closer to home and also the past players, like I'm a good family friend of Mike Camilleri and Seeing like Andrew Cogliano, Phil Di Giuseppe coming from Vaughn and going to play there, I think that really helped. And like this is this is the path I wanted to take, and I'm pretty happy with it. Absolutely, and and you should be happy with it. You got you got a couple goals so far this season, buddy. Trying to trying to uh, yeah. rip some iron there. Uh, few few of them there. How how are those first two goals? And just to get your second season started, that's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, it was pretty good to get those two goals off the bat. Is pretty good and I was pretty happy with and last year only scoring one goal so I already have more than that so <laughs> that's pretty good <laughs> I, I saw your uh your former head coach in JRC Jeff Angelides um and myself we've been talking uh I've known him when we were both together with the Brampton Bombers back in the GOJHL mm-hmm. almost seems like a century ago now but it was like four or five years ago and uh, I saw him tweet out and say oh this is pretty damn good if I don't say so myself or something like that um how, how great was uh, uh, Coach Jeff for you, touch upon a little bit, uh, obviously your last junior coach before you uh, moved to the NCAA? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's, he was a great coach to me and gave me a lot of opportunities that I'm pretty grateful for. And he's always keeping in touch with me, asking how I'm doing and cheering me on since I've been here in Michigan. So uh, hopefully you can get back home and see him soon and maybe go golfing with him when I get back home in the summer too. Jeff's not a good golfer. Come on, is he? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. There you go. There you go. Um, and obviously, you, you said you wanted to stay home a little bit, uh, Eric. Well, stay home. Stay closer to home, of course, maybe with Michigan. And that's not a bad thing. Trust me. Um, but the importance of, of moving away, and we talk about – I talk about billet families to a lot of people. Um, and I don't think you're billeting now, but you're still, uh, you're still away from home at the end of the day. Um, how was that transition for you moving away from home just in that aspect in itself? Yeah, so it was the first time away from home for me. So just like handling stuff by myself, like keeping up with homework. And I guess, well, we were in the dorms the first year. So food was, we just go downstairs and get our food from the cafeteria. But yeah. just other things and I think just handling stuff, time management, like washing my own clothes, stuff like that. It was a little bit of a transition, but I think I handled it pretty well. Hey, us Italian boys, once we leave home, the mom, moms don't do anything yeah. anymore. Hey, we yeah. got to do everything on, on our own, buddy. <laughs> I know. There you go. Um, and with, with, you know, that being said, the, the juggling, the juggling of, of hockey and school, have you seen it being hard for yourself? Um, how has that been up there? Yeah, I think the my first semester it was it was pretty different and just like seeing how much I got to study and do certain things to like get better grades and stuff like that. I think we get a lot of help here with like tutors and stuff like that, but yeah, it's not it's not the easiest thing to do, but just tr- got to manage your time properly and I think especially now since like we're not going to classes right now, it's all online. We got a lot like a little bit more time to do certain things, so I think that that's helped so far too absolutely um repping your country eric is something that everyone wants to do doesn't matter the level you're at and you had that opportunity 
with uh, Team Canada East at the uh, World Junior A Challenge um, 2019. Played four games there at that tournament. What was that tournament like for you? How grateful and honored were you to put uh, the Canada crest on your chest? Yeah, it was a great honor. And I think in the past, like not being invited to any of those camps or like through the OHL and stuff like that, I think it was a pretty big honor and playing against the top junior A players in the world and playing against like Russia and Canada West. And those teams it just showed like how other teams play and how much like how much better you got to be to play at that next level. And I, I think I saw that and it was a really good experience for me and playing against like Alec Newhook and Dylan Holloway. I think you see those guys and see what they do and then just trying to work as hard as you can to be as good as them or match their speed and stuff like that. I think it was a great experience. Let me tell you, buddy, not invited to any camps, but you were invited to one camp and it was the New York mm -hmm. Rangers camp. Yeah after the draft in 2019 um, when you were drafted in the seventh round by the New York Rangers. Talk about that because, you know, you're, you're getting noticed by NHL people. You're, you're training and you're practicing with NHL guys or, or guys that could be in the NHL. How was that overall experience at the New York Rangers NHL camp in 2019? Yeah, it was another big jump for me and going from the OJ and then going to NHL camp. You go to play against like, bunch of college guys guys from Europe I played against like Adam Fox who played the NHL the next year and that Igor Shostakovich who's a goalie and even Capo Caco so wow. it was a good pretty big change and I think I did pretty good for myself I, I got a couple points in the games and stuff like that so I had a pretty good uh, experience out of that and I think they're pretty happy with how I did and how I performed so Absolutely. And, you know, if people don't know you personally or don't really know the story, there's a pretty cool story, which I even obviously didn't know, but it's my job to read up on it and, 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 and bring it up because why not? Uh, being drafted to the New York Rangers, there's also a family connection um, with your grandfather being an Ontario-based scout for the Rangers. Um, and, you know, he's friends with Gordie Howe and Gordie Howe was wearing number nine. That's why you wear number nine. But just talk yeah. about that, that uh, story in itself, because, you know, having a grandfather, which I'm very close to, and, and I'm sure you are with a connection directly for yourself in hockey with the NHL team that drafted you, man, that's pretty cool to me. Yeah. He was a, uh, he was a scout back in the day when like Phil Esposito was on the Rangers. So that was a while ago, but. Hey, he's still, still how, buddy. <laughs> yeah. So how he was a uh, scout with the Rangers and get drafted by the Rangers is pretty cool. And also like, being able to grow up with seeing Gordie Howe like a couple times a year and whenever he'd come to Toronto, he'd stay at my grandfather's house. So that was just pretty cool. And like celebrating birthdays with him, stuff like that. It was uh, pretty cool. That's awesome to have like in, in a way a, a full circle of, uh, of family, but family within hockey as well. It's, it's something Eric that you probably really, you know, doesn't matter how old you are, you being at 19 years old to can take uh, advantage of because it's just so crucial to have that support system, isn't it? Yeah, it's really important. I think, like, my grandfather and my, my mom and my dad, they always want to watch me play. And especially during this time, it's pretty hard. No one can come watch our games. But I think even last season, like, at least one of them were almost there every weekend at home here in Michigan or even away. So it was pretty good to always be able to see them. Well, the drive's not far, right? About, what, a couple hours? Yeah, like – Four or five hours. Oh, okay. I thought it was a couple. <laughs> you doubled that. No. <laughs> hey, yeah. but still four or five hours to come see you. I mean, not a big deal. Obviously, they can't now during COVID times, but they mm -hmm. have been watching like online on on. It's probably not hockey TV. What's the uh, the broadcast outlet there? It's on like Big Ten Network or Big Ten Network Plus, something like that. It's always switching every once in a while. <laughs> Whatever, yeah. Whoever gets the rights, man. Whoever gets the broadcast yeah. rights, they 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 plug those games. Um, and finally, about, about your team this year, Eric, obviously you guys are playing um, one of the only conferences, all the teams in the conference that are, are playing six COVID tests per week. Um, on the ice, though, you guys got a good chance this season. How have you guys started? And just touch upon the, uh, the season in itself. Yeah, we started off really good. We're 4-0 right now, and our freshmen are really taking uh, advantage of their opportunities. And we got, like, 
three freshmen that could go like top 10 in this year's draft. So wow. we're having a, we have a pretty good team this season and we just got to keep doing what we're doing. I think we'll be good. And I think you will be as well. Listen, Eric, uh, continue to pop in those goals for us, for us back home. Um, you're doing, you're doing great. You're doing well. And uh, best of luck with Michigan and yourself personally. And thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, everybody. That was episode number 22 of Mamma Mia. This is Fire Talk. I'm Nicholas Fiore, the Oakfield Blades play-by-play broadcaster in the OJHL. And that was Eric Ciccolini, number nine forward for the University of Michigan in NCAA Division I. Follow us on all social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Instagram lives every week or every other week. Episodes being released mostly every Thursday. So please, please follow myself, follow Eric, and don't miss out. What else are you going to do? You can't watch any hockey. You might as well watch Mamma Mia. This is Fire Talk. Stay safe, everybody, and Mamma Mia. Now Davis takes it and looks to come the other way. Davis is in, trying to drive, and he will look to go across. Good play to Davis, though, to get it right back to him. He goes down low to Israel's. Centering. It's there. Scores! Stevie, Stevie, Stevie! Stephen Weddle scores his first OJHL playoff goal for the Oak Bell Blades. This game is opening up in a big way for both teams. Ricketts centering. What a pass. Israel's breakaway. The move. Scores! What a goal for the Alaska Fairbanks commit. The assistant captain, Harrison Israel's, with an absolute dandy. Download Alliance. Jack Lyons centering. Scores! The double jacks combine as the, that puck popped up like a jack in a box. And it's Jack Ricketts from Jack Lyons. 6 1 on the 40th shot of the game. It's all over. Oleg Smith hits it in. A chance here can develop, but the Blades will look to take it. And, is, and Ricketts finds Israel's. Breakaway Israel's. A chance back in. Rebound. That was Mamma Mia, This is Fire Talk with Nicholas Fiore. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next episode.